If you are new here, this is a new project for July. It started on July and we will continue this project till December, probably, <laughs> because it's a big project. And um, I'm running this uh, project on Patreon. This is the first uh, video tutorial for this. And we're going to be stitching uh, six different uh, types of uh, embroidery stitches. And uh, there is a great news for you guys because I'm giving away um, the free um, pattern. So this uh, first page is uh, for free. I'm putting the link in the chat and I will also leave the link in the video description. So you can go ahead and download it uh, if you want to uh, stitch this project with me. I'm going to be using um, uh, pastel colors of floss like this. They are muted colors and uh, I like uh, this choice. Uh, I don't have a specific uh, uh, color map for this. You can use any color you like. It's differently. It uh, really doesn't matter because uh, it's just a simple stitches and uh, you can play with it uh, whatever you want. You can use uh, different variated fl uh, floss like this mm. or maybe some multicolor uh, threads that you already have. You can use uh, even uh, um, scraps of uh, threads. Uh, it doesn't really matter. So this is... Um, my uh, thread choice and you, you know the idea uh, you can uh, uh, stitch uh, colors from the top to the bottom and create a rainbow this way so you can start from maybe from blue and then this color so then you can choose this one and the yellow and then what is the orange okay let's do after yellow this color and this color and we can finish by this color and this one so this way we can create um, a cute rainbow how do you guys like it maybe we can replace those colors so it's gonna look nice Okay, let's start. I'm going to be using a combination of uh, uh, UMC threads. They're, those threads, uh, it's a gift <laughs> from UMC. Uh, and um, I'm running a giveaway on Instagram so you can participate and uh, win 50 skeins of those beautiful uh, threads. So let's start. I'm going to hoop. And yeah, regarding this hoop, it's hoop from... Norge, this this is how it looks like and this is the size of this hoop it perfectly matches the project the entire page like fits perfectly here and i uh, really like it i will leave the link to this hoop in the video description if you want to to get the same hoop like i have so let's start from the most simple stitch here. Hi Dominika. We will start from the running stitch. Okay, where are my needles? And I'm gonna be stitching with uh, full six strands. So uh, you're gonna see all the details. If you are stitching with the full six strands, uh, so choose the needle with a big eye so it can fit your all six strands. Um, I think this one, the biggest one, will work the best. Okay, so I will be stitching those two lines with the blue. Then I switch to the light blue and uh, this six strands uh, line I will be stitching using this color. So here is uh, those lines is for. It's for one strand of floss, two strands of floss, three strands, four strands 
and six strands. I never use five strands of force, so there is no five strands of, strands of force lines here. Um, <laughs> that's why. <laughs> After four, it goes uh, six right away. So I'm threading my needle. I like to lick my threads, so I thread it this way, but you can use uh, some kind of uh, needle threaders. Uh, there are tools like this. And I would like you to show something regarding the knots. Um, in this case, where there is nothing stitched here, and um, I wouldn't like to have uh, such a big knots on the back side because I'm going to be sewing it and making an embroidery uh, book from it so I don't have any knots. I will be uh, stitching and avoiding those knots. I will be using another methods. So uh, for this case I'm gonna use far away knot method. Uh, so I will be stitching here so I'm going far away somewhere, like this place, some neutral <laughs> place, which you are not going to be using uh, currently. And I'm gonna go from the top. As you can see, there is a knot here. And I'm starting from this place. And why I do it, <laughs> you will say, this is the reason. Um, I will be stitching uh, this line right now. And when I will finish, I will finish my thread from the back side here. And then I will cut this knot and I will be finishing the same way um, the strand on this place. I will show you later how it's gonna look like. So. You make your first stitch, it's a little bit like, you can choose uh, how short or long your stitch is going to be. And the distance between your, the place where you put your needle should be like the same. You should keep the same distance. So I'm skipping here and running forward. And this is a running stitch. It's a simple stitch which I'm gonna use to stitch this uh, nice border. Each page is going to have its own unique border. And uh, this border is going to be stitching the same, uh, using the same um, stitches which are used on this play on this page. <laughs> it can be a little bit hard stitching with all six strands of floss, uh, depending on uh, which uh, kind of fabric do you have. I would recommend to get some cotton fabric. Also, linen will work well here. So I just did the first line for this running stitch and here I will be doing whip it running stitch. So I will stitch the running stitch first and then we will be going to be uh, whipping. Um, and it's also fun if you are using a different thread colors. You will see now. If you ha have some uh, questions, please ask me in the chat. We have enough time to stitch today. Please uh, let us know where are you joining from, which country. It's really interesting. Also, for each line, you can practice different distance between the stitches. See, I just a little bit enlarged the distance between the stitches here. 
If you don't like your stitches like you did, you can undo it. Just slightly um, put, pull up your strat with your needle, um, try to not split it, and you can simply undo it like this way. So in this case, I would like to make a little bit uh, shorter distance between the stitches, like here. So it's really simple, you don't need to cut your thread to undo your stitches. Just need to, to pull it up carefully and save the thread you are stitching. You can stitch with the same thread again. Great news, I just got the first shot of vaccine today, so I just back from, <laughs> um, from the hospital, actually from the office, which is my husband is working, so we, we got the vaccine there. Okay, now it fits perfectly, and... I'm leaving this uh, thread this way. I'm gonna continue. Probably, yeah, I will be finishing this thread later. So I will leave it outside here and I have my free needle now and I will be whipping. So, um, which thread color to use for whipping? Maybe the color I didn't use yet. Let's see. It's gonna be fun if I will use the yellow color, right? So I took a little short strand because I know that uh, I don't need a long strand here because I'm doing only this line. So when you are cutting your thread, you need to think a little bit uh, how much thread do you need actually here. And I'm making knot again. And I'm doing far away knot from here. And I'm jumping here. I'm going slightly uh, on the on the side uh, of this stitch, or you can go in the middle, yeah, here. But you are not splitting it. You are like going on one side, and you are going up, and. Now you are going under your previous stitches and we are going to be doing this way. Continue doing this way and you have a whippet running stitch. And this is how it looks like. To finish the stitch, go in the middle of the stitch here. When you come up. See? Uh, maybe I should zoom it a little bit more. Let me try. <laughs> So that was running stitch and whip it running stitch. And for those lines, we just uh, using a different uh, amount of threads. You can see here, and this is going to be like a sample for you. 
to see uh, which, how many strands to use in uh, your projects and how it, they look like, so stuff like that. Yeah, I like uh, whippet stitch and I also like how back stitch look when it's whippet. So let's switch to the back stitch. And so, which strap to choose? So here we have green, maybe one more green here, and then pink, and this pink. It's going to be this pink here. And I will also be stitching back stitch here and here, and I will use another thread color to whip it. So it's going to look interesting. You can use the same uh, color of thread, but I just like how it funny looks like. Okay, making far away knot. And maybe it's too far away. I don't know. Okay, let it be. So for back stitch, you start like from running stitch, you just make one strand straight uh, stitch forward and you come up as for running stitch and now you are not going forward you are going back to the same place when you just did your previous stitch and now you come up here And you are going back again. So this is why it's back stitch. It's just going back. <laughs> and um, you are not wasting uh, a lot of thread on the top side, but you are wasting twice more thread on the back side. So you just need to keep in mind especially when you are cutting your thread to, to plan uh, how many space you will need to stitch. Hi Deborah. Yeah, and uh, this sampler page is free, guys. You can download it from, by the link in this chat and I will also leave the link in the video description and in the first uh, comment here on YouTube. So you can go ahead, download it, uh, and stitch it for yourself, and have fun. There are a few instructions for stitches, and there is a link to this video tutorial in this doc document, and there is also a little uh, preparation video. Uh, which I did for Patreon, so I included it in this uh, free sample because it's. Um, I, I think it's important uh, how you are uh, cutting your fabric. So I was showing how to cut the fabric properly for your embroidery projects, so you have a perfect weaving uh, on the uh, fabric. And I also share the tip how you can turn your iPad to the light pad for pattern transferring.
So for backstitch you also um, better to keep the same stitches distance between the stitches and then this stitch is going to look uh, uh, neat. If you need to stitch some curls with this stitch, uh, so you, uh, you are choosing the distance between the stitches depending on how strong this curl is. So if it's really curled uh, too much, so you may be um, considered to, to make shorter distance between your stitches. But today we are stitching straight lines just to start and just to learn how this stitch is uh, look like so I'm going outside with the thread I will uh, finish it later and I will use another color of the thread to whip this uh, stitch I really um, I like whipped back stitch even more than uh, running whipped stitch Okay, which thread color to choose? Hmm. For pink, I think it's gonna look like nice. Maybe some light blue. And yellow also will work very, really nice. I like yellow. Somebody were missing the sound of threads. I understand, guys. Uh, it's summer, and you you want to like spend a lot of time outside. Okay, I'm threading my needle. I also spend a lot of time uh, traveling on Saturdays and Sundays, so we try to go to some new place or to the sea. Uh, Okay, I'm doing far away knot as usual, so you guys will see it, I will do it from here. And I'm jumping to the middle of the stitch, like I did before for running stitch, I start the same way. And I'm whipping the stitch this way. Uh, also keep in mind you need to whip your stitch from the same direction for each stitch. From this side to this side or for different side. Um, just keep the same uh, direction. It looks like a candy. I don't know, it looks so yummy. I would eat it. <laughs> okay, so when you're done, you can like do a little bit this way. Hmm, I should do it here because it's a little bit loosey. And when you like um, make it tight a little bit, it, it becomes uh, nicer. Okay, so you can finish your strut here on the same side where you come up. And that was a whipped back stitch. Okay, so that was that pink color. And then we are switching to another pink here and we are going to be sp stitching split and stem stitch. Let me move the camera a little bit down. Here we go. I'm gonna use this color.
you know those threads are pretty cute I like them the quality is pretty much wow You know, there are different ways how you can make a knot. I usually uh, do this way. And then I do this. And here is a knot. When you have six strands of floss, you can do it different way. Like, you can do this way. <laughs> By your hands, like this. Or, also there is an interesting way how you can make knots. I learned it somewhere on internet. So, let me... Hmm. How it was? Like something like this. Hmm. I need to watch this video tutorial and show you guys. I don't really remember. But you need to... The point is that you need to uh, whip it... Uh, Keep your strap <laughs> around your needle somehow. It's a really interesting way. Okay, I do far away knot from here. And this is a split stitch. So you can you start uh, the same way as you start for back stitch. And then you come up half face through to the, the same distance. And you go back and split your stitch, previous stitch. Uh, you can split it in the middle, you can split it uh, somewhere in the end, at the end of your stitch, you can do uh, both ways. Let's split it in the middle. And you can, you go here also halfway and split your previous stitch. And when you're stitching more than two strands, it creates something similar like a chain stitch, you know? And this split stitch, I know that some uh, embroidery artists use as a filling stitch. And you can create even uh, some thread painting effect when you are using split stitch. So when you are looking at the finished work, you never guess which kind of stitch people use it. Because it can be... It looks like long and short shading, but it's actually not. For this stitch, it's also important to keep the same distance between your stitches. So it's gonna look like a consi consistent and nice. And for hand embroidery, I need to notice if you are new to this, you need to have some uh, hoop and uh, keep your fabric straight, st uh, stretched in the hoop tight for embroidery. If you are not going to be using the hoop, uh, so um, uh, the fabric will be puckering and it, it will create wrinkles and um, it's not gonna look nice. In this free PDF, there is a link to another PDF uh, for beginners uh, with how to get started tips. Uh, so there is information about hoops, uh, which you, which kind of 
hooks to use, which kind of fabric you need to use, which kind of needles and thread and all the stuff. So all the materials, you have information about that if you are completely new to embroidery. Okay, the last stitch for a split stitch. I like to use this kind of stitch for outlining before um, stitching long and short shading. So it creates um, a really nice border and then all the objects which I stitch, I'm filling with uh, another stitch, they look uh, really, really nice. So here is an example of the flowers which I stitch it and there is a split stitch under everything so you don't see it but it created this nice border. Okay, stem stitch. So you come up this way and you need to keep your thread on one side and create a loop. So you can you can use the thread. Uh, you can keep the thread with your hand like this until you will make a stitch here. So you need to come up in the middle like this here, and now you can let your thread go and you finish it this stitch. So next stitch. You do the same way the same way. See the distance between this place and this place is the same. And you can put your needle down here when you are finished the previous stitch. Run right in this place. And you are keeping the loop on the right uh, on, on one side. So you need to keep the loop on the same side. Oops, <laughs> probably I did a mistake, I need to undo this, sorry, okay, one minute. <laughs> okay, so while we are keeping the loop, you come up here from the back side and it's going to be right, <laughs> yeah. Put your needle down, keep this uh, loop, uh, come up from the place where you just finished the stitch uh, and make your stitch, tighten your stitch. And continue doing this way. I like to use this stitch for stamps uh, when you are, I'm stitching something uh, floral. I also use it for some curls and lines. You can also use it for letters. So any kind of stitch we just stitch it, we can use it for letters and So I just continue stitching this way and it's really, really simple. See, thanks to the big uh, needle that I have, when it goes through the fabric, it creates enough space, uh, so enough big hole for the strat which I'm going uh, through the fabric. Oh, there is a knot on the back side. Uh, 
and also when you are you see that your thread is twisted so you can put your needle down like this and I'm like brushing your thread this way and it helps to unwind the thread and then I can continue stitching and it creates uh, better stitches which are not looks like uh, they are twisted and also if you are using too long strand you can uh, uh, create uh, <laughs> un unexpected knots which you don't want so just don't uh, use too long strand in your work Something is going on on the back side. <laughs> okay. And the last stitch, you can just do as a straight stitch. Also, yeah, one interesting uh, point to make your uh, line solid, you need to make your last stitch uh, uh, short. So you need to make this long stitch as usual and then make one more short stitch in the same place when it's ended. And then it looks like consistent on the end and uh, we actually should uh, do it on the beginning okay so I will show you guys how to finish um, the thread I need to flip this hoop <laughs> okay to this side So as I said, I like to, I'd like to not have knots on the back side, and I like to finish my thread using the loop. So I go under my stitches, which already exist here, and I go through this loop I just created, and my making the stitch tight, but. If when you are using six strands of floss, it can create a little bit like knot here. But it's not really big, actually. And now I'm hiding my threads under previous stitches this way. So I'm just like, I'm whipping the stitch from the back side a few times. I can do it three or four times. I think three times is, is enough and now I can cut my thread really close so it looks uh, pretty much accurate and you don't have any thread ends like uh, <laughs> this way <laughs> hanging this way okay so what we are going to do with those far away knots so you can go from the front side and you can cut them so you can carefully cut your knot from the front side be careful don't cut your thread uh, don't cut your fabric yeah fabric so I'm cutting those threads everywhere where I created them and now I'm going to be finishing all those threads So we just we started from those threads with far away knot as you remember. You can help with your finger to push uh, push up your fabric a little bit so it's going to be comfortable to cut it. And I'm flipping so it's going to be comfortable to work with it. 
and now I have this thread here and I'm threading threading the needle when you make your thread wet and so it's more comfortable to thread it okay and I'm going to be weeping because I'm far away from the last stitch I go under the stitch and now I go under the stitch one more time and I make a loop and I go through this loop yeah and now I'm whipping a few more times and then I can cut it so your ends like hidden And your backside looks uh, more neat, you know. <laughs> there is a needle threaders. Okay, I will show you how they look like. So here is a needle threader. This is how it looks like. It has a loop on the side, so you go through this through your needle eye and then you put your thread here through this loop and then you push it. You pull it through outside and your needle is threaded. So when I have a distance like this, I go under my previous stitch this way to this place and I do it one more time. I create a loop and go through it. And now I'm just hiding my ends. So that's it guys. You can continue stitching this pattern and fill all the lines with different colors. I'm excited to see your how which colors do you use for each stitch type. I'm gonna show you how I will be stitching uh, the border. So. Hmm, which which color to choose? I don't know. So I finished with uh, maybe some color which I didn't use here. Maybe this one. It's like a violet color, color of lavanda, lavender. And I'm gonna stitch those lines, uh, those two lines with a back stitch, and it's going to be whipped back stitch. And the running stitch in the middle is going to be, yeah, it's going to be just a running stitch. And this place, this object, I will stitch using um, stem stitch. So it's going to be look interesting like a curl and uh, when you are stitching this you need to keep your loop outside of the curl word, uh, of the curl so your stitch will gonna it's gonna look uh, properly so your stitches will lay properly Far away not. You need to do those far away knots when you have 
six strands of loss, uh, three strands or one strand. When you use two strands, you can use um, you can start stitching from the loop, and when you when you have four strands, you can also start stitching from the loop. So you just put two strands and then putting put them together, and you have four strands and the loop. I'm stitching currently with six strands of floss here. But I'm going to be stitching this curl using two, uh, four strands of floss. So you will see guys how I start without uh, creating knots using the loop here. So how do you guys feel about this project? Are you excited? I just couldn't wait to start stitching it, you know? <laughs> I had to do some preparations and videos and instructions and stuff and just... I was always stopping myself from stitching it, so... I just couldn't wait. I'm so happy that I can finally stitch it. You can experiment with longer stitches and shorter stitches here, so you will look how they look like. Especially when you are stitching with six strands, you can do long stitches, right? And when you are uh, stitching less strands, like four, three, two, one, you can do shorter stitches. Or you can start from short stitches and then make them uh, longer and you will see the examples uh, how this stitch looks like depending on how many strands you use and how long the stitch is I'm gonna stitch only one corner so you guys you will see how it's gonna look like oh my god I have 10 minutes left and I will need to go okay so this is going to be whippet back stitch so I will whip it later I will show my finished page um, and probably I will record more videos and uh, post it on patreon so you will see my process it's going to be like probably uh, like a time lapse <laughs> so and i will use hmm, choosing the colors maybe this color or this one you know it's going to be fun to use some variated stripe like this here right and I can choose a, a color which is going from light to dark and it's gonna look really, really interesting. Okay. Cool, so I cut my thread and the thread is changing the color like this from light to dark. And you can start stitching from the middle. I'm, I'm, I took four strands from it, and I took those strands one by one, like this. 
and you will also need to let it on medium to like since it it's not twisted Let's use three, three strands. Okay, so I have three strands separate and I put them together this way. And I want to start from the dark place so I will make a knot on the dark side dark side sounds funny and I start stitching from the middle So it's going to be stem stitch and I make really short stitches here because it's curved shape and I want to fit it and place my stitches properly here and I keep the loop outside of the curved shape like this. If you know how to do chain stitch, you can go with chain stitch, it's also gonna look nice. But we didn't stitch chain stitch here yet on this place, so I'm just trying to use all the stitches we already know right now, which are available on this place, on this page. See how smaller um, the line looks like when you are stitching with less, less amount of strands. I like to use variated threads when I stitch something floral and with different, with combination with the different stitches since uh, it gives them such a different uh, effects and I like how it looks when I stitch lavender using variated strands there are going to be pages for um, more stitches. I think for lazy day this uh, is going to be a separate page uh, with the samples of um, examples of how to use it and I think lav lavender is going to be included here and we can stitch uh, different kind of flowers and leaves using lazy daisies. And there is also a fun page for French knots. So I was drawing the <laughs> examples of how to use and uh, designed a page with uh, sheep and uh, little trees and uh, clouds, which all, all the objects uh, you can uh, stitch using uh, French knots. See the color of the thread started changing. 
and it creates an interesting cute effect and all those words like split stamp and repeat stitch they are also going to be stitched and i'm going to use split stitch uh, to stitch all the uh, words here and probably i'm going to use uh, black floss or something like that yeah i'm going to probably use black floss or for all the word words here see it's gonna look nice okay guys i gotta go if you want to join this stitching along and get access to all the patterns you can join on patreon i will leave the link in the video description and in the comment under this video uh, you will also find the links in my website uh, it's embroidery uh, embroideryartbynat.com uh, all the links in the video description so welcome everyone come join i also send kits with all the materials for this project needed for this month uh, so this is a monthly subscription and uh, every one month i will be stitching more pages for this book it's going to be a really really cool project so um hope you guys to see you on patreon uh if you ca have some questions please message me i will answer right away if i can so Let's keep in touch and I will try to keep you posted on Instagram and everywhere. Um, okay, guys, thank you so much for watching and see you next time. Bye!